was only two, 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 two damage. Add that shit up. <laughs> Hello, friends. My name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to Rimmed Racer, a game by a developer named Morgan Dog. Um, and it's a really cool spaceship roguelike with a couple of different gameplay types, uh, and a lot of different ships to unlock. So. I don't have enough space points to buy any of these guys down here, uh, cause I crashed a couple ships. <laughs> but this is your free ship, it has pretty low base stats and doesn't really offer anything except that it's free! <laughs> the turtle has thick skin and uh, gets more resources, but a slower top speed. So this is probably my favorite ship. Then you got the magnet that has a larger pickup radius, and uh, the flash travels faster um, for a little bit cheaper. So, I'm gonna probably be the, the van of this ship, and, uh, we'll, we'll explore. Okay, so you could do chapter one, which is basically you being led to beacons. Chapter two is bringing resources back to the home world, and chapter three is, uh, pretty advanced with boss fights and uh, a lot of different objectives to complete. Alright, so the controls are pretty basic. Use your mouse to cl click around. Uh, left click is to accelerate and choose things. Right click is basically to explore things. Uh, so right now I have a defense research facility as my first uh, stage, my first upgrade. There are many, many upgrades to pick. So, we've got to go collect some materials so we can get to stage 2 and get some more upgrades. So, I gotta boost myself out of the gravitational pull. Um, I can't say that I'm like a huge fan of the retro graphics or whatever. The, the, the scan lines on the, on the screen really kind of get to me after a second. Um, and also the, the ship lacking detail, like any sort of detail, is pretty frustrating to me as well. But it is a really relaxed game, I enjoy the soundtrack, it captures like the lonely feel of space, and um, overall, it's been a pretty positive experience for me. OW! OW! Yeah, because you're accelerating constantly, like your velocity never really changes unless you do something to change it. Or something affects you to change it. It's it's really quite difficult to steer. Oh, I got a level up from collecting some stardust. Ziggy, t Ziggy stardust boy. All right. So your level ups carry over across playthroughs. Apparently, I had some stat points left over from the last time, um, and I've also upgraded. Star of the North gives a small amount of resources when collecting the uh, stardust that I was just now collecting. Uh, there was also a bonus that will let you double the amount of stardust you collect, but since I always seem to get hit by stuff, I'd rather just be survivable. <laughs> so I have nine stat points to assign. Exploration uh, gives a chance for quest success. You can see at the bottom there what the percentages actually are. They're scouring, which uh, probably my favorite increases item finding. Technologies needed to get into like these little space stations that are floating around so kind of like exploration but uh, a little more advanced I suppose and then survival increases uh, resource bonuses and such so I'm gonna go for a little more scouring you only get five skill points per level so it's it's wise to uh, spend them properly you can reset it but it will cost you uh, space points. Space points, which is what you use to buy ships and such, and uh, that's mostly why I'm broke now. So we're just bopping around. Got an inventory, you will pick up items occasionally. This is what I brought, a couple supply kits, an item scanner, and a phase cloak, which turns the ship invisible. But then I guess maybe the ship comes with this? Or have I just been stacking this without realizing? I don't know. It's also upgrades and such. Uh, right now I have an aura that increases speed and acceleration, as well as the uh, micro brew of vacuum. I don't know what it is. Acceleration and item fighting sounds good to me. 
But uh, there's a lot of different ships. Ethan Scout is probably what I have the most gear for. Candy art style. <laughs> Found some skins for the ship. It's, uh, it's a pretty deep game. It's pretty crazy. I've only scratched the surface, I feel. Oh, there's some stardust, boy. You do have to watch your resource meter on the bottom. Uh, your resources here will be consumed as you move. Every time I accelerate, it eats up resources. So, it's a, a careful balancing act. Uh, you need to know kinda how far out you are from your house. The reality was crushed in front of my eyes. I had been staying so long in my dream world that I had forgotten how to live. So I accidentally crushed the reality with only a touch. And that was enough. The story is told mostly through poetry. Well, some of it is like, wow, that's actually pretty deep. Like, that last poem was just like, what? What? <laughs> Coffee house poem? Like, no thank you. I don't get it. There was one about a comet that I rather like in the first chapter. Maybe I'll cut it in. A burning ball chasing targets. Ball of energy. A being of its own. The beginning of everything or the end of everything. This little light of unknown origin. Fire of nothingness. Still out here looking for resources. Is that a sun? Oh, it is. Stay away from the sun. Yeah, but we get to explore this galaxy. 114 space points, 37 resources. Get away from the sun! Yeah. That shit will burn you up so quick. I tried to pass through one, of course. Okay. And I like how all the things are named. There is greatness in this universe. Yeah, it's a pretty great thing. Called Dayton! No, that's, that's fucked up. The sun could fuck me up. Please don't make the sun come to my house. Please? I'll know he's outside. There's no way you could stop him. <laughs> Scan the area for items. Yeah, let's do that. Anything? Up, oh! Asteroid. Found nothing. Nothing! Well, damn. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Our kind. Sharing anecdotes about our history. A joint memory is important for our survival. It should mean something to me, but it doesn't. Wow. Fuck that. Is this gonna kill me? I'm gonna wait around. It's gonna come back this way. 100 resources! Yay! We're not gonna die yet. Uh oh. <laughs> so we're picking up materials. I need to bring these materials back to the home planet and uh, not die doing so. Which I'm kind of refilling my resources slowly. 129 space points! You can lose or gain space points through those uh, random events. So, click at your own risk. Fuck yeah, level 9! What, what? Obviously, like, even if you're blowing a bunch of ships up, this shit is increasingly addictive the more I play it. Uh, uh, okay. That's good. What's all this then? Wow! Wow! Whoa! Quite a gravitational pull. 
Explore it! God damn it. Is it coming back? Yeah! The, I the energy here is strong. The force so unknown. Ice planet of energy. Hmm. Land and refill water supply. Or stay in orbit and let sensors investigate. I would say... <laughs> Land. Yeah, get some resources. A theft you would never recognize. Exploration failed on that puppy. And it cruise over here. A dead satellite. Ah, oh, shit! Collected all those resources, huh? Well, they're gone! Asteroid! Fuck! Failed exploration. We need to go home, boy. Oh, no, 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 no. You really gotta be so careful. Another dead satellite. What the fuck? Alright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna supply kit myself. If I can stop and get safe for a second. 107 resources. It's good for another satellite hit. Oh, what are these things? Don't kill me. Oh! <laughs> I really pushed hard. God damn it. I hate it. At least we lived. It was only 222222 damage. Add that shit up. Uh, there's a sun. The universe is just so vast. And it's all procedurally generated and just so replayable. And you level up your ships and... Ah. Uh, love on the soundtrack. Oh, I remember these fucking things. Reliable Haven. That's where my house is. I've got fucking... A thousand materials. Eleven hundred materials. So what can that do for the home planet? I don't know. Navigate the asteroid field. Like Han Solo and shit. See three pill in the back. Like the odds are fucking shitty. Oh god. Don't ever tell me the odds. Alright. Here we go. Falling totali totality and dreams of the future. Odd future wolf gang kill them all. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's kind of a tripped out game. I like it for that reason. But I also wish it was more linear and, like, cohesive. I'm back to my home base. Yeah, drop this shit off. What I got for you? Stage two of nine. I've been places. I've been doing shit. Yeah, I'm home now, Daddy. Cool. Cool. So now we can build a couple more things. Permanent bonus: orbiting moons. Ooh. Yeah, I want moons. Look at we got a moon. <laughs> That's fun. See others in space with a colonizer airport. Galactic Space Point Refinery produces space points every year. That's called an investment. I should have probably took it first, but... I didn't know if you could, like, be attacked and shit. Lock. When I listen, would see if I was hearing how the ice cracked inside of me and all melted. To defrost, maybe. Right. So, friends, this has been Rimmed Racer. I have been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I had quite a good time with this game, all things considered. There are a few blemishes that we will talk about in the score breakdown right now. So the controls, I've given a 10 out of 10. They are lovely and fluid and exactly what I think of when uh, I hear of a spaceship anything sort of game. Anything set in space. These are the controls that you should use. They're 
uh, slippery and slidey and frictionless and exactly what they're supposed to be. The fun factor I've given a 5 out of 10. It is kind of a Netflix sort of game. Um, it's not extremely engaging. Uh, I wasn't on the edge of my seat at any point. However, I think uh, the replayability comes from building up your ship and building up your stats so you can take full advantage of the universe. So the difficulty I've given a 6 out of 10. It's really not that difficult, even with no upgrades. Um, playing Chapter 2, the difficulty stepped up a bit. Um, and then Chapter 3 is where it, it gets, it feels like a real game. So, not great on the difficulty at a 6 out of 10, but um, a pretty good attempt. Replayability. I love this. 9 out of 10. Um, basically, any game where you die and you said death to power up the next character is just bound for success in my book. An amazing addition to this game, and it extends the life of it almost infinitely. Definitely great replayability with a 9 out of 10. The innovation I've given an 8 out of 10. I've seen a lot of spaceship roguelikes in my day, but none of them have taken on like the casual... Um, I mean, I've played things like Weird World, in Infinite Space that's an exploration game, but this is like uh, an open world, free form expl exploration game, which I think is super cool. And uh, when you when you combine it with the controls, it's just an amazing experience and one that I have not had before, which means the innovation skyrockets at an eight out of ten. The graphics I've given a six out of ten. It is still slightly above average. I see they're going for a certain look. However, the look doesn't really work for me. It's a bit too retro, and um, it, it could be worked over, I think, just a little bit more. I'd like to see more details in the ships and whatnot. There's so much detail in the planets and the asteroids and whatnot that it seems a shame to not be able to see the, the ship that you're flying that you have to stare at the whole time. So 6 out of 10 for graphics, not great, but passable. Music I've given a 9 out of 10. Uh, it is just a couple synth pads thrown together, but it really adds a nice eerie feel. And um, it, it fits well with the aesthetic that I think they're going for. You feel lonely, you feel, uh, you know, uncomfortable. So I think the music really fits well, and I've, I've awarded it a 9 out of 10. The sound effects I've given an 8 out of 10. I think they're really good as well. Things like level ups, uh, getting sucked into a sun, and having all your alarm systems going off like, hey, you're fucking dying. <laughs> it's just, uh, the sounds don't get monotonous really at any point. The, the engine is super, super low key. You hardly even notice the sound at all. I, I think they really did good with the sound design, and uh, I've decided to award that an 8 out of 10. The story I've given a 7 out of 10. It's sort of basic from what I can tell, uh, explore the universe to set up a new home and eventually a new galaxy to set up a new home. Um, but the way that it's told through the poetry, I think it's really good. Uh, some of the poems seem a little hackneyed and just like coffee shop hipstery. I'm saying this to be deep, but then other stuff is like, wow, that's actually pretty good. The stuff about the comet, I really, really liked. Um, so yeah, it's told really, really well, although it is a bit basic. Um, I think it's worth looking at for the writing, at least. So I've decided to give the story a 7 out of 10. The level design, I like quite a lot. The stars floating through the background and whatnot, um, as well as just just the vast feel of it, you know? Um, there is, you know, your home world, which is a central hub, and eventually you can return back to it. And just explore how huge this freaking game is. It's a universe. It really is. And uh, I think they did a great job with the stars helping you to get around, kind of. And uh, orient yourself to what direction you're going. Really, really well done with the level design. I think it loses a couple points because the objectives are always just kind of like, Well, go, go look at this thing. Go look at that thing. But um, overall, I think it's a really engaging game. Definitely worth a play, and uh, at not a bad price. So, Rimdresa is on Steam officially today. 
I hope you'll go check it out if it looks like something you would enjoy. This has been another Date and Dissects. If you did enjoy, I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. Until the next time, friends. Bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.